Twicefold Ampersands is an obscure RPG maker walking simulator. Nothing in this game makes sense, but that's kind of the point. See, it's like a normal RPG maker game, but you play as a... as a... Alright, right, so you wander a bit, and then you get to talk to, uh, this guy. And on top of the descriptive character designs, every character in the game talks like this. What really makes this game mysterious is how difficult it is to find. As far as I can tell, every public download has been wiped from the internet. It was made by Saint Timmy, who has his own YouTube channel, supposedly uploaded it to his personal website. He has a video of the game on his channel, uh, and left what I believe is a link to the web page, but uh... Yeah, if anybody knows how to use that to access a web page, it certainly isn't me. It doesn't matter anyways though, because it seems that, for some reason, Saint removed the download link from his already hard to access website. So any downloads of the game today are going to be uploaded by people who downloaded it before it was removed, and of course this has its own dangers of viruses, trojans, etc. And to steep this game in even more mystery, it's also rumored to be connected to a game called Schnell Online, which is a sort of deep web chat site said to have been made by Saint. This game has like one video on YouTube, supposedly Twicefold Ampersand has one of two keys to unlock this game, where Saint's other games have the other. Uh, but as far as I can tell, I don't think this game really exists. It's pretty much just a rumor. So already, this game is very interesting because of just how difficult it is to find without having been removed entirely, and its connection to other obscure projects. Luckily for me, after a lot of searching, I found this very helpful fellow, Nomad9590 on Reddit, who found a download for this and a few other games, and after working through some problems with Reddit's brilliant to live chat system, uh, I had my own copy of this almost non-existent game. So onto my gameplay, Twicefold Ampersand starts you off in a sepia-toned plane with some fan-looking character and no explanation. I talked to this guy to maybe get any exposition and... Yeah, you learn pretty quickly that no character is going to help you understand what's going on. So I wander around a bit and talk to this fellow who teleports me to the fish, which makes a wind sound, and then bam, red tile on the ground. Which brings me to the actual gameplay in Twicefold Ampersand. So basically, you walk around a bit, find something new, interact with it, and then walk everywhere that you've discovered so far, hoping that anything has changed in any of the previous rooms. And most of the time, nothing has. If you interact with something, and it changes something in the game, there will never be an indication that tells you that something changed. Some things change stuff, and some things just don't, and it's up to you to figure out what actually helps you progress. Take this example. I come up to this door, have some dialogue, can't go in. All good, right? I move on. Then a while later, a long time later, I interact with this color pillar and walk around a bit, wondering what to do next. And then so I wander around for like 10 minutes. Next time I interact with this door, new dialogue, I can go into the door. You would think that the fact that you couldn't go into the door earlier would just be an indication that the door is just there for decoration, but no, it's an extremely vital area that you gotta get to progress in the game. But the allure of Twicefold Ampersands isn't its highly engaging gameplay, it's the weird and bizarre landscapes and rooms that you come across. Like probably what is for me the most offsetting room, the people picture room, uh, you don't even have to come here for anything, it's just optional spook factor. And personally, whenever people insert pictures of real things into games, that's what really gets to me, so it was just wonderful to explore that for myself. Or we have this paper land, which I've come to call Schloss due to its file name, which had a really strange drawing scrolling in the background. It's actually really reminiscent of some of the Yumaniki rooms. And as an aside, this game is very similar to Yumaniki, you can definitely see some inspiration. The landscapes are always very strange, made up of repeating patterns and repeating textures. The only difference is that in Yumaniki, the characters just don't actually talk to you, and here they talk to you, but it's all nonsense. Anyways, back to the gameplay. While exploring and coming across new areas and such, I learned that the game is actually rather small, except for one room, Schloss. If you play this game, you'd better get used to the background, because you'll be seeing it a lot. This room is giant, and it loops, and the background moves so you have no landmarks, and I hate it. Uh, it's, it's not really that bad, it looks pretty cool. But once you walk across the same black pixel trees three times in a row, while looking for the one tree with a single red pixel that will let you leave, you start to get a bit tired. 
anyways as you talk to the characters you come across as interact with different objects. You start to collect some items which have as nonsensical names as everything else in Twicefold Ampersands, and as far as I can tell these objects change previous areas you've been to to let you access new ones. So after exploring a while, I talked to this orange pillar, and then was able to open this door in an entirely different area, and pulled this O item off this hand, and this is where it all comes together. I hope that you've remembered all of the dialogue you've seen, because if you haven't you'll be very puzzled what to do with this O. All the way back, at the very first screen of the game, that fan guy that we saw has an O in his dialogue, and this is meant to be your hint to go all the way back to him. So after wandering around, exploring all these creepy and mysterious rooms, you go all the way back to the beginning, going through everything that you've seen previously and talk to our favorite character, and you get this. You can kind of explore what he looks like, but eventually you go up to his head, he shares his wisdom, and then the game ends just as quickly as it started. So what is the meaning of Twicefold Ampersands? See, I think that there is none, and that that's the point. There's almost no sense of logic while playing this game. You just wander and wander and wander, while interacting with every item you see. Eventually the rooms that surprised you at first become familiar, and I know I've certainly memorized this whole game by now just by walking around. You slowly make progress, gain a new item, or talk to a new character, while having no answers and not knowing what you're actually doing. And in the end, you finally finish, you meet the one character you've done everything to see, thinking that maybe he'll enlighten you about the whole point of what you've been doing, and then the game just ends. It sort of sidesteps what it means to be a game. Very little of the progress that I made while playing was done because of some logical conclusion I came to my head or some interaction with game mechanics. Most of it was just done by luck just happening to interact with the right object at the right time and going and finding what it actually did after a while. So the ending is just as meaningless as everything that you do in this game. You never get an explanation for why interacting with some random object gives you what you need to progress. It just kind of happens, just like the ending. And at first I was a bit disappointed just by how the ending didn't really explain anything, but really now I can't think of a better ending. It's very similar to Yumaniki where the fun comes from just exploring the eerie world, not necessarily any concrete story, and theorizing about what it might all mean. If there were any straightforward answers about what the characters were saying or what you were doing, then it would just be another RPG Maker game. It wouldn't be as interesting as mysterious as it still is today. Personally, I just find it so intriguing how a game that has had every opportunity to just die and get lost on the internet forever, after been, having been removed from the internet by its own creator, and being very obscure even before the download was removed. How it survived and is still talked about even to this day. Even if the wandering got a bit tedious in the middle, I really enjoyed my time with Twicefold Ampersands, as short as it was. Uh, and if you're as interested in these mysterious and obscure games as I am, I'd recommend that you embark on the pilgrimage to find it yourself. Okay, so... This is the first video I've ever made like this. I'm just gonna kind of keep trying things out with this channel, seeing how things go. Uh, I definitely think it'll be mostly gaming videos though. This video took a while and I don't think I have it in me to make a video like this for every obscure game I play. If you guys have any recommendations of games for me to try out, I'd be very thankful. Since by the nature of these being obscure games, it can be a bit hard to come across. So I'd like to have a stockpile of them. Uh, you can see on the screen any list of games I'm considering playing. If you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I do want to thank Alice Down the Spider Hole, probably the only real article online about this game, which gave me a lot of useful information. Uh, and of course, Nomad9590 for giving me the download. And thanks for watching this experiment. Uh, I hope to keep improving. Subscribe if you're interested in these type of games, and I'll see you next time.